is we want to focus on the promises of God. So we talked about virtue, which is dealing with sin. We talked about knowledge, which is dealing with the uncertainty of the world. And we talked about temperance, which is dealing with self. Today, we want to focus on patience, which is about the promises of God being steadfast. So here's the question. What is patience? When you think of the word patience on its surface, what do you think about? Waiting without grumbling. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's what I'm doing. I'm waiting without grumbling. Whoa. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. All right there. She said it all. That, that, that's right. Winner, winner. <laughs> yeah. Patience. Right? So. We think about this word patience, right? Let's just do a little, a little word etymology, not to be deep, but simply to be thorough. When we think about this particular word patience and the Greek word for it, it's found 32 times in the Bible. Most often it's, it's translated as patience. It's also translated as endurance, patient continuance, or waiting patiently. But the predominant theme of it is patience. It comes from two Greek words. The Greek word is hupomone. It comes from two words, which means hupo, under, and mone, to remain. So the ideal of, of patience or hupomone is to remain under. To remain under. It is to remain under pressure. To remain under under circumstances to remain under I want you to I want you to keep that in your mind it's about remaining under this biblical ideal of, of patience there's definition or dictionary of the bible says it's a steadfast constancy or endurance it's a steadfast constancy or endurance it remains under steadfast un movable. The vine said that patience is the quality of character that does not surrender to circumstances or succumb under trial, that it is the opposite of despondency and is always associated with hope. See, to persevere is to continue doing something or trying to do something even in the face of difficulty. It's to try to achieve something despite opposition, despite and dis disencouragement. Patience. Here's a what I call the technical operational definition of this word patience. When you put all of this stuff together, what does it mean? What is it, what is it really saying to bear up under, to, to be steadfast in the face of obstacles and challenges? Here's the Dave Jones dictionary definition. Someone read that for us. Subjecting yourself to something which demands the submission of one's will to do something against which one naturally would rebel. So it's submitting myself. Submitting my will. It's, it's subjecting myself. You know, to put myself out there, right? And then once I put myself out there, I'm then submitting my will to something that I would naturally rebel against. So, so that the ideal of enduring, the ideal of continuing, the ideal of being steadfast for something that I want, 
That's not the biblical ideal of patience. That's not the biblical hupomone. I'm going to school, I'm studying, I'm working hard. That's not hupomone. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to save up to buy a house. I'm trying to save up to buy a car. So I'm denying myself certain things and I'm, and, and, and I'm setting money aside. And that means I, I've, I've got to deny myself. So that's not hupomone. Hupomone, biblical patience is required when I've got to subject myself, embrace something, endure something that left to myself, man, I'm out of here. I ain't, feel, I, I, I ain't dealing with that. So the hupomone only comes into play when it relates to something in which I would naturally rebel against. Let me ask you, just, just, just conversationally, thinking about that very functional definition of patience, because we're trying to understand, right? We've got virtue, which is about manifesting the will, the way, the value, the principles of the kingdom. We've got knowledge that's added to virtue because I can't live the values of the kingdom if I don't know what the instructions are. Then I've got self-control, and self-control is the ability to apply the knowledge and now self-control needs the ability to endure what comes when I try to apply the word of God. Remember, Jesus talked about this when he talked about the parable of the sower of the seed. He talked about those who receive the word, but when the pressure from the word, from applying the word comes, the word dies, the seed dies, it's plucked up. What are some of the things that you experience and that you endure, that you say to yourself, man, listen, if it was up to me, I wouldn't put up with this. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to start, bro. <laughs> it, 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 it's a lot. It, it can be sometimes. Sure. There's a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. So, so here's an operating principle. We're just laying a foundation here, right? The Bible says, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, who hopamone, who endures, who subjects himself to something which demands submission of his will to something against what he would naturally rebel. God says that person has a blessing. That person has a blessing. Marvin, as you said, life is full of difficulties and trials. Our flesh, my flesh, your flesh wants to run from difficulties, wants to run from trials, or worse, can become bitter because of them. We got an enemy that wants us to quit, to give up, to faint, to not submit, to buck and run whenever we face trials and pressure there's that voice saying give up quit god desires for you and i to have biblical patience to add patience to our to our self-control and self-control to our knowledge and knowledge to our virtue he desires for us to have that so that you and I have the spiritual capacity to endure trials. So what is not biblical patience? And we're going to we're going to we're going to build more and more on this ideal of patience, right? So 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 patience is really about me subjecting myself and submitting my will in circumstances in which I would naturally rebel. This is, this is what biblical patience is not. It's not, I'm gonna grin and bear it. Like when you go to the dentist and you gotta, you gotta get a cavity or something filled and you just kind of sit there and you just kind of grin and bear it. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm gonna make it through. That's, that's not biblical patience. Biblical patience is not a passive 
attitude. I'm just just going to sit back and I'm just, just going to go with the flow, kind of just kind of just, you know, get through it all. It's not accepting delay. Because a lot of times you, you can't do anything about the delays in your life. It's not it's not a question of tolerating or, or accepting delay. No, no, no. That's not the biblical patience for which hupomone is describing. A biblical patience is not putting up with people. You know, I, I want to take this moment to kind of clear this, to clarify this, right? So when the Bible talks about dealing with difficult people, it's not talking about dealing with difficult people from the standpoint of patience or hupomone, it's talking about dealing with difficult people from the standpoint of long suffering. We need long suffering for difficult people. We need patience for difficult circumstances. It's a very important distinction. We need patience, biblical patience, hupomone, endurance, steadfastness, consistency for difficult circumstances. We need long suffering for difficult people. Got that distinction? Yes, sir. All right. So let's talk about some biblical examples of patience. Biblical examples of individuals who have subjected themselves to something that demanded the submission of their will to something against which they would naturally rebel. Go in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. We're laying this functional, operational definition so that we can get a, a good working sense of the word. This hupomone, this, this steadfastness, this constancy, this, this biblical patience. It's, 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 it's not the kind of patience that we generally think about in dealing with people. That's long suffering. The Bible describes that as being long suffering with one another. That, there's a specific Greek word for that. We are talking about dealing with difficult circumstances, circumstances in which I would naturally rebel. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. Who, so, someone read this for us on the screen, please. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance to the race God has set before us. Good. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Now, when we look at this verse, this is a good functional definition describing Jesus's life and ministry, right? So, so when we look at this back, back, back to Hebrews 12, 1, right? So, so, so Paul says that we got to get rid of the stuff that's going to slow us down in our race, right? Got to strip ourselves. Or whatever gets in the way of you and I running our race. We're going to build on this on Wednesday night. But tonight, just for this morning, we're just going to touch on it a little bit. Right? He says we got to get rid of everything that, that slows us up in running our race, our Christian life, our course. That word race means course, and it really speaks to the journey, the calling that God has for each of us individually. My race ain't your race. Your race ain't my race. There's a level of endurance I need for my race that ain't the same level of endurance you need for your race. But in order for any of us to run our race, we have to run it with what? Endurance. Endurance. Now watch this. We have to run our race with endurance. Verse 2. 
-hmm. How was it mm. that Jesus was able to do what he was called to do? Look at the text. He says he endured the cross. He endured. He hoopamoned. Mm -hmm. He hoopamoned. He remained under. He subjected himself to something which demanded the submission of his will to something against what he was naturally rebellious to, what he would naturally rebel against. Anybody remember the picture of that that we find in scripture? The Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane. Good job, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, look at here. <laughs> let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> let's let's, let, let's yeah. talk. He, he, this is the perfect picture. Yeah. Subjecting himself to something that demanded the submission of his will. To submit to something which he wanted to rebel against. He said, Lord, no, no, there's got to be another way. That cross is going to hurt. I created life. Now I got to taste death. Yeah. We rethink this. But what, but, but what was his response? Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. He did his will. And the Said text it. tells us, he did it, he endured, he hoopamoned, he subjected himself yes. to something that demanded the submission of his will to something against which one would naturally rebel because of the joy that was set before him. You know who that joy was? It was you and I. Amen. Verse three. Again, Pounding this ideal, this concept, in looking at the life of Jesus. Considered him who endured. Consider him who subjected himself to something which demanded the submission of his will to something against which he would naturally rebel. Consider yeah. him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary the Bible lays out for you and I as an example of endurance Jesus' embracing of the cross and it says if you and I are going to be able to fulfill our purpose our calling to run our course in this Christian life and again your course ain't my course my course ain't your course the things that you have to endure in your course are different than the things I have to endure in my course, but we all have to endure to run our course. And Jesus is the model and the example for us. Look at James chapter 5, verse 11. Here's another example for us of what endurance, hupomoni, patience, constancy, steadfastness looks like. We give great honor to those who mm -hmm. endure. Uh, this is James 5, 11. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. And you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. So this is describing Job. And it's describing a character quality that Job manifested in the midst of his trials. And the character quality that Job manifested in the midst of his trials was hupomone, was this ideal of subjecting oneself to something which demands the submission of our will to something against 
what I would naturally rebel against. What was it that Job had to go through that he had to subject and submit his will to? I mean, he went through a lot, Job. He was lost his family, sickness, man. And Job was rewarded by God because of how he went through. The Bible says that he went through it with hupomoni. Mm -hmm. He went through it with the quality of character that does not surrender to circumstances or succumb under trial. He went through it with the opposite of despondency. He went through it subjecting himself to something which demanded the submission of his will to something against which he would naturally rebel. And remember, all of his friends came around him, tried to get him to sin with his lips. As Mona said, you know, biblical patience is is, is going through it without complaining, without grumbling. The Bible says Job never, Job never sinned with his lips. He endured. He didn't just grin and bear it. He went through it in such a way that there was a blessing on the other side of it. See, that's why James 1.12 says, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. So that's those are biblical examples of what patience steadfastness, constancy, this, this, this character quality that does not surrender to circumstances or succumb under trial. That's, that, those are two biblical examples of what it looks like. Here's a biblical example of what it doesn't look like. Someone read that for us. Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey. And they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? They complained. There's nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. We hate this horrible manna. So, so here's the people of God, right? They are in a circumstance and situation. Obviously, they want to rebel. Obviously, they're like, listen, let's go back to Egypt. Moses, you don't brought us up out of here. Ain't no water out here. Ain't no food out of here. We eat in this manna every day. We tired of the manna. We tired of you. We tired of God. And the Bible says what facilitated them turning their attitude and turning their heart against Moses. And they began to speak against God and Moses. What turned their attitudes and their hearts against God and Moses was this. And this Hebrew word grew impatient is the same same sense or ideal of our Greek word hupomone for steadfastness, constancy, continuousness, subjecting one's self to circumstances that require the submission of one's will to situations that they would naturally rebel. They grew impatient. And whenever you and I grow impatient, whenever you and I don't add patience, hupomoni, steadfastness, of character, whenever you and I don't subject ourselves and submit our wills to circumstances we would naturally rebel to, the evidence is what comes out of our mouth. You can tell an individual that's not not walking and adding because of what they say. They spoke against God and against Moses. Looking elsewhere, blaming external circumstances rather than dealing with their own will. That's an example, a bad example 
of a failure of patience. I love this quote. God knows our situation. He will not judge us as if we had no difficulties to overcome. What matters is the sincerity and perseverance of our will to overcome them. God knows. What's the, what's, what's, what's the old hymn? Jesus knows all about our troubles. God knows our situation. He's not going to deal with us as if we've had no difficulties to overcome. What God is interested in is the sincerity and perseverance of our will to overcome them. God is not going to judge us because life hit us. The thing that God is examining, the thing that God is concerned with is our response. Did we put up a fight? Or did we run? Did we put up a fight? Or did we run? Jesus put up a fight. Job put up a fight. Children of Israel in the wilderness, they ran. I want you to think in your own heart and in your own mind for a minute. And then we're going to talk about how do we develop this ideal, this character quality, this discipline of patience. But I want you to take a moment and do some honest reflection in your heart and in your life. The difficult circumstances and challenges in your life. Are you meeting them with the quality of character that does not surrender to circumstances or succumb under trial? Are you meeting them with an attitude that's the opposite of despondency? Are you facing them with an attitude and a heart of hope? Are you subjecting yourself to those difficult circumstances and situations in a way that demands the submission of your will to the thing that you would naturally run, rebel, and avoid? I want you to reflect that in your heart. Ask yourself, because God says he's not going to allow anything to come your way that you can't handle. But in every situation, he's going to give you a way of escape. But the way of escape is to bear it. The way of escape is to bear it, hmm, to bear it. Wow, that, that sounds like hupomone. That, that, that sounds like remaining under. Well, why do you need to remain under something so you can bear it? You're under the weight of something and you're bearing that weight. The ideal of a Christianity that does not involve difficulties, challenges, trials is a false Christianity. It is a false gospel. It's not just bad teaching. It's a false gospel. Now, before I go on, thoughts or questions about this foundational framework of the biblical definition of endurance, patience, steadfastness, Hupamone. We good? Troy? Yeah. Well, I, I would say the, the number one place that this comes to bear is in your, the people closest to you, your personal life, your family, the people you work with every day. 
people you're closest to or the ones that where you're gonna have to exercise this the most, persevere and, and, and work through things. Yep. Watch this model here. So Troy, you just, you just, you just, you just it's a good, good transition because there's a perfect balance between self-control and patience. Last week we learned that self-control or self-mastery over all desires and passions, right? That, that is to bring um, into harmony with the will of God, my passions and my desires, that that's, that's, that's self-control. And the ideal of, of governing my passions, my flesh, because my flesh is always gonna be my flesh, as long as I'm in this body, my flesh is gonna have cravings and desires and wanna go buck wild against God. And the ideal of developing self-control is a lifelong challenge, right? And the older we get, the longer we walk with God, those passions don't go away. You could walk with God for 30 years and your flesh will still be your flesh. The only difference is how much self-control have you developed? The battle within our selfless flesh is always going to rage. So what's the balance between self-control and patience? Well, we've established the fact that self-control really has to do with the pleasures of life, handling the pleasures of life, what my flesh likes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And all of these things are of the world, and this world passes away, but he that does the will of God shall persist, shall continue, shall endure. Self-control deals with the pleasures of life. What's the balance? The balance is that patience, hupomona, steadfastness, constancy, endurance, subjecting myself, to circumstances and situations that require the submission of my will to something that I would naturally rebel against, that's needed for the pressures of life. So we see this harmonious balance between these two ideals and we see the connectedness between them. Self-control is for the pleasures of life. Self-control is a daily exercise. Daily, I've got to deal with my flesh. Daily, I have to deal with my flesh wanting to satisfy and feed itself. My flesh being my flesh, right? Patience is self-control exercised today, tomorrow, the next day, and so on. Self-control is about daily exercising to control the passions of my flesh. Perseverance is self-control that's exercised over a lifetime. I can't exercise patience without developing self-control. Just, just, just like I can't develop self-control without knowledge. And just like I can't develop virtue all of these things are connected. And that's the balance. Self-control is daily. The exercising of that daily control over a lifetime that is what patience and perseverance is. Patience is not a human attribute. Yes, there are people when it comes to natural circumstances and situations are patient. Me naturally, I'm not a patient person naturally. I can't wait for a minute to go by in the microwave before I wanna get down to 10 seconds. I'm ready to pop that thing. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm not yeah. a naturally patient person. But we need God's grace. 
so that we can develop this steadfastness, that we can endure the hardships without quitting or giving up. And all of this is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So that the ideal that if we are going to complete our journeys as believers, the thing that God has called us for, it requires endurance. It requires this submitting of ourselves to things that require the submitting of our will. It requires this endurance of circumstances and trials. So what are the elements of patience? That's good. So what are the elements of it? What are the components of it? First is the word of God. You and I need the word of God if we are going to develop any kind of patience. Romans 15, 4, it says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Yeah. That we, you and I, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, that word patience is hupomoni. Patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that the word of God provides for us patience. It's a source of hupomoni. It's a source of steadfast continuance. It's a source of being able to submit my will to something that I would rather run from, that I would rather rebel against. The word. That's why I got to feed myself on this thing. The other thing that's an element of patience is trust in God. And, I, and, and notice, I didn't put faith in God. Because a lot of people say they have faith. And, and in fact, you can have yeah. saving faith, but not yeah. trust God in certain areas of your life. That's true. You can have saving faith, but not trust God in certain areas of your life. That's why you have some believers who are saved, sealed, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, on the way to heaven, and they don't tithe. Because mm -hmm. they don't trust God with their money. They don't forgive because they don't trust God with their heart. You can go on and on and on. So I put the word trust in God, not faith in God, because there's a difference. There's a difference. Look at what Paul said. Now, listen, Paul went through it. Paul, yes, he did. Paul, man, listen. Paul he went through it. He didn't have no TV ministry, no book deals, no Paul. Listen. But watch what Paul said. Paul said in everything. Watch this. Look at, the, look at our operational definition of patience that's woven into this. But in everything, commending ourselves as servants of God in much endurance, in afflictions, mm. in hardships, in distresses, in beatings, mm. In imprisonment and tumults. <gasps> tumults is everything else beyond beatings and distresses and hardships. And tumults must be a lot because here. That's a plan. That's serious. Right? And there's the S on the end of that thing. In labors, in sleeplessness, <sighs> and in hunger. Mm. But notice the operation here. So, so, so Paul says that we did this in much endurance. Much man, I I had to constantly, continuously subject myself to things that required the submission of my will. It wasn't mm. once; it was continuous, because we face all this stuff: afflictions, hardship, distresses, beatings, imprisonment, torments, labor, sleeplessness, hunger. But notice what the catalyst for Paul was. Mm. Look at that text. Look at the text, folks. Look at the beginning of the text. And but in everything. Identifies what enabled him, the element for his endurance. Mm, servants of God. Everything commending our, ourselves as servants of God. Yep. And much endurance. In Man. everything, commending ourselves. As, he said, in everything. 
What everything. Does he tell you when he says it, everything, even the things that I would naturally rebel against, even the things that I would run from, and I got so convicted, man. Mm, 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 man. Whew, boy. Whew. In everything. Everything. As a servant of God, a servant has no agenda. Mm. A servant has no will. That's why we can't practice patience. We can't exemplify steadfastness and continuance. We can't exemplify endurance as long as we have a will that we're not willing to submit. Paul said in everything. He trusted God. That's what he's saying. In everything, I'm commending myself as a servant of God. I trust you. I know it hurts, but God, I trust you. See, some of us, we stepped out. We did this. We believed this. We stepped out on this. And we got hurt. We got bruised. The pain was more than what we could bear. And we said, never again. I'm not going to do that. We quit. The call for endurance and patience never promises painlessness. It promises afflictions and hardships and distresses and beatings and imprisonment and tumults and labor and sleeplessness and hunger. Because Paul trusted and he believed God. The Christian must have a faith, a trust in the integrity of God, that nothing that happens to him happens that God has not permitted. That nothing that comes into my life comes that God has not permitted. And if God has permitted it, he has a divine purpose. Joseph said they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Joseph, Hupamoni, he persevered. He had that character of steadfastness in the face of trying circumstances and trials. What's the other thing we need? What's the other, other element? We need a strong hope in Christ's return. It's a hope. When the Bible talks about hope, it is often talking about hope related to the return of Christ. Romans 8, 25, and if you read this whole context, it's talking about the return of Christ. He says, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it with hupomona. We wait for it patiently. We wait for it subjecting ourselves to circumstances that require the submitting of our will to things that we would naturally rebel against. Why? Because we wait patiently for the return of Christ. Our hope is that there is more to this life than this life. Our hope is that there's a heaven to gain. Our hope is that my labor is not in vain. My hope is that he went to prepare a place for me and will return to receive me unto himself, that where he is, there I may be also. My hope is that there's a reward that is laid up for me, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord himself will give. I can't see that, but I hope for it. And it's that hope that causes me to wait patiently. Not waiting like standing in line, but waiting from the standpoint that I will endure this journey of life until I transition into eternity. And while I am enduring this journey of life, there's a character quality that I'm developing. Because if I believe that life, that this is all it is, that all it's about is you know, what kind of house you can have, what kind of car you can drive, how much money you can, you, you, you can build up in your bank, how, 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 how many credentials you can have. If, if that's all that life is, 
you and I will never be able to exercise biblical patience. We won't. It requires a hope that there is more to this life beyond this life. And that my endurance, my perseverance, my steadfastness has a reward. Prayer is another element of patience. This is three verses. Um, someone get ready to read this for us, please. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, 10, and 11. You got to read it all together to see the full picture. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. So, so here, Paul is saying, what is Paul saying here? We continue, we're praying, don't stop praying. Paul, Paul is saying, we're praying for you. Mm -hmm. We're praying that you understand God's will, right? And, and, and that you understand God's will, not with, he's saying that you understand God's will, not with your little puny intellect, not with your reason, mm -hmm. right? But with what? The understanding that the spirit gives. The understanding that the spirit gives, right? Verse 10, 11. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, to attain all steadfastness and patience with joy. Steadfastness and patience, the operational definitions of hupomona. Paul mm. is saying that this stuff comes as a result of prayer. Asking God to give wisdom and understanding. Asking God to empower us to live a life that pleases him. Asking God to help us to grow in the knowledge of God. Isn't that all that First Peter mm -hmm. was talking about? What the knowledge of God actually means? And then causing that knowledge to help us to be strengthened with all power. Why? Why do I need all power? To attain all steadfastness and patience with yeah. joy. Hupamona. Now watch. Watch the, watch the last verse. Mm. Strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, to attain all steadfastness and patience with joy. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. It's not just putting up with it. It's not just going through it. But it's going through yeah. and putting up with it how? With his power. But what's that like? Also with steadfastness and patience with joy. joy. It's joy. With joy. That's your attitude. Yeah. With joy. With joy. Okay. Joy is an inward thing. Yeah, fruit, one of the spirits. H happiness is external. Happiness is based oh. on happenings. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Talk about that. Joy is internal. Yes, sir. J joy is based on a revelation. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Started, boy. Come on now. One of them fruits. <laughs> Lastly, because I got, I got, I got built. I, 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 I don't know why I think I can get through all. I don't know why I do that. Um, I guess when I be studying, man, this stuff gets so good to me. So the elements of patience, the word of God, trust in God, strong hope in Christ's return, prayer. And lastly, and more importantly, I think, yeah, is the proper perspective. I like that. The proper perspective of patience. First Peter. 12, 13. Someone read these two verses for us, please. Mm. It says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something was strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make your make you partners with Christ in his suffering, Whew. so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. 
So here's the ideal. Here, 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 here is the proper perspective. Mm. The, the, the Christian, the, the, the Christian must believe that trials are not the punishment of a cruel tyrant. That, 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 that the trials I'm going through is because I did something wrong and, and, and God is punishing me. God, God has cursed me. You know, you know there's folks that teach that. Well, there's pastors that teach that. Well, you must be out of the will of God if you're going through. Yep. I'm like, huh? They teach that. We must have the proper perspective that mm -hmm. trials aren't the punishment of God. It's not the curse of God. Now, don't get it confused. Don't get it twisted. We reap what we sow. Yes, don't sir. get it twisted. But the existence of trials aren't strange to the Christian journey. Mm. God, I'm sorry, say that again. Question? I'm sorry, that was me, Pastor. I, I just feel like trials sometimes are testing faith. Yes. Yep. Yep. The, the, the God permits them for his good and our good. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be surprised. That's the perspective. It's not strange. You ain't cursed. Trials don't come because you're carnal. Trials come because you're in this thing called life. Trials come oh. because God uses them to develop you. You can't Amen. grow as a Christian simply by listening to sermons. You need context that brings mm. the application of what you listen to into your soul for life application. Man, that's good. He says, listen, don't think it's strange. Instead, what does he tell us? What's the proper perspective? He says, don't think it's strange. Be very, very glad. He didn't just say glad. He said very glad. Lord have mercy. Now, without, without everybody trying to sound real spiritual and deep, right? How many of us, Come on like, like real, how many of us, get really happy about our trying circumstances and trials. No, we don't. This this really the opposite, polar opposite. Brenda? <laughs> when I get happy, I'm going to let you know, Pastor. <laughs> so you about to say something, Brenda. <laughs> I have to be the first to know. <laughs> Go ahead, say something. It's uh, maybe stupid I don't know, but I got to find out. So when I, when I'm sleeping, when I go to bed and I say, I, I recite my psalms and I say my prayers, I end my prayers with uh, Father God, surround my bed with a hedge of protection that no evil may befall me and supply me with good dreams and not evil dreams that no evil befalls me. And I pray like that. Is that not, is, is that wrong? I, cause I can't do it without that prayer. I can't, cause I, I dream well when I pray like that. And I, I sleep well. But if I don't, man, I'll be having some crazy dreams, some sinful dreams. And and I don't want to do that. So is that not enduring when you pray for God's... Am I just supposed to endure those trials, those physical trials? Or is part of... I don't get it. Do you know where I'm coming from? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I, 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 get, I, get, I, get, what you're, I get what you are... Um, expressing. So let me go back here. I'm sorry, I, I got to click through every, 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 everything. Okay, Mona, can you see the screen? Let me get to it. I'm still looking at you. All right, let me see. No, I can't see it yet. Oh, oh yeah, I see over, it now. Scroll so over. Scroll over. Yeah, on your phone. If it's on your phone, scroll to the right or left. I did. You see it? I got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Model. So, so, so. When you say, hey, you know, I'm praying that God would protect me while I'm asleep so, so, so that 
I think I don't have these crazy fleshly dreams, right? That's right. a prayer. That's a prayer for the spirit's help to exercise self control. Okay. So, so right. That's 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 against the pleasures of life because because the crazy dreams I call them fleshbacks. We all oh, yeah. we all have fleshbacks, right? You know, the yes. flesh remembers how stuff was, and the flesh be like, "Yeah, yep. exactly, yeah. exactly." <laughs> you yeah. know, right. that's a good name for it. That's a good name for it. <laughs> Those are flashbacks, right? And so, Mona, what you're Flesh saying back. is, is it okay to have a prayer for God's help that you can exercise self-control with your flashbacks? Absolutely. What we're talking about are the pressures of life, the external circumstances and situations and trials of life. What you're talking about is the internal dynamics of things that we've experienced that are embedded in us that try to find their way back to the surface. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That was well said, Pastor. <laughs> Good. No. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> That was a great question because it helped to bring that model more, more, more to life. So, so. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. So, so the question is our perspective. It is our perspective. The optimism of Christian patience, the optimism, the hopefulness, the joy that comes from the ideal of developing a character that is steadfast in the face of circumstance, difficult circumstances and trials, the optimism that comes, the ability to be very glad in the face of subjecting myself to circumstances that require the submission of my will to things that I would naturally rebel against. Pastor Dave. Yes. Uh, that was an interesting question that uh, Mona asked. And I thought to myself, I said, well, wait a minute. How do you, how do you confirm this? And I thought of the, of the model. Jesus' prayer, the model. And in that prayer, he, he asked two things. That you lead us not in temptation, into temptation, and deliver us from evil. And that's it. Yep. That's a good, that's a good illustration. So 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 here, here's here are the here are the elements of patience. It comes from the word. That's why God gives us the word. It's the it's it's the result of trust, not just believing in God, but trusting in God. It's the result of having hope in Christ's return, that this life isn't all there is, right? That there's a reward beyond this life for my endurance. It's the result of prayer, that I can get the wisdom and the revelation of God to understand and to see. And it's the proper perspective that trials are part of this thing. And because they're part of this thing, right? I can be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering. Remember what Paul said? Paul said, I, I want to know Christ and share in the fellowship of his sufferings. Yeah. Right? So that when, when you and I endure, when we, when we, when we have hupomoni, when we exercise biblical patience, there is a... a knowledge, there is an understanding, there is a partaking of Christ. There's a discernment, there's a level of intimacy, a level of infusion, integration of Christ, his character and his nature that we are able to share and partake of that I'm not going to get from 10,000 Bible studies. That's right. And that's the problem in the church today that we, 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 we want to study, we want to read, we want to listen to sermons, but we don't want to apply nothing. Yep. All right, so let's bring this thing to a close. So 
How do we get biblical patience? So we talked about the elements of it. Okay, how do we get it? These are the things that are involved. These are the perspectives and things that I have to have. The word of God, trust in God, hope in Christ's return, prayer, proper perspective. These are all the elements of patience. But how do I get it? I love this. Diamond is just a piece of charcoal that handled stress exceptionally well. Mm. You know how we say that back in the hood, though, right? <laughs> we say uh, 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 pressure bust pipes. That one? Yep. Pressure will either bust a pipe or make it yeah. down. <laughs> it's all about how we respond to the pressures of life. It's all about the response. Amen. How we develop biblical perseverance, biblical patience. It's all in how we respond, how we handle, how we respond. Again, patience is not a human attribute. We need God's grace so that we can develop steadfast endurance through hardships without quitting. Because the natural tendency, guys, is to quit. Yeah. How many of us know, know what the amygdala is? The who? Uh, yeah. It's the part of your brain responsible for consciousness. Yes. The okay, there you go, doctor. Yep. Yes. You know Dr. Ray? He better know it. All of <laughs> <them> degrees. <laughs> so so the amygdala is a small, it's a small, like pea-sized thing in your brain, and it's responsible, as Ray said, for conflict. It it controls fight, flight. Mm. That's the fight flight center in your brain. And when pressure comes, your amygdala tells you fight or flight. Mm. For most of us, when we face difficult circumstances and situations, we listen to our amygdala, our flesh. We break camp and run. Mm. If we're going to develop patience, biblical patience, if we're going to develop the ability to subject ourselves to circumstances that require the submitting of our will to things that we would naturally rebel against, it's going to require a choice on our part. Romans 15, 5 says, Now the God of patience and of comfort grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to the Holy Spirit. The God of patience, of hupomoni. See, it comes from him. It's something that he grants to us, but he doesn't grant it to us in a vacuum. Look at what James says in chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Someone read that on the screen, please. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. But let endurance have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Mm. Mm. Love that. Mm. That's one of my favorite verses. Mm. How do we get biblical patience? Look at this verse. Anybody take a look at the verse? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, the Bible is an open book test. What does the Bible tell us is the way we develop biblical patience? First of all, our response should be we should count it joy. No. Anyone when else? You go through trials. Mm -hmm. um, perseverance, just enduring, enduring the trials. 
And like Mark said, count it all joy is, is all about your attitude. But the attitude. And, and have a perspective that we're going through those trials to test our faith. And as a result, it's going to produce endurance in us. Ah. Ah. <clears throat> ah. Do you ever take a test and you have the answers in advance? Yes, sir. Brenda, when you were going to, going to school, wouldn't you have loved to have the answers in advance? Mm. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have covered a lot of crying and a lot of tears. <laughs> So, so when we when we look at this verse, right? This is this is a really important, powerful verse here, guys. I love it. One of my favorites. We're, we're, we're closing out. This 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 is this is how it's developed. We have to go through all that we went through to get to here, so that this has some substance and weight behind it. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials trials now what does he tell us is the reason you can have joy when you're going through trials <laughs> what's the reason mm. that he tells you you can have joy it says knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance so 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 there's something i got to be convinced of come on there's something I've got to be convinced of. Yes, sir. What is it that the trials are intended mm. to test? Your faith. faith. Are you in the faith? And that, Now watch this, guys. Now watch this. Watch, I don't have this on the screen, but watch this. Watch this. Mm -hmm. We often misunderstand the biblical use of the word faith. Biblical use of the word faith is the Greek word pistos. Mm. And that word means continuance. See, we think it just means I believe. Yeah. yeah. And what happens is a lot of folks believe, but they don't continue. Come on. Well, I believe there's a God. That's not biblical faith. The Bible says the devil believes and trembles with fear. So does yeah. the devil have biblical faith? No. Mm -mm. Faith isn't just believing that God is. And faith isn't just believing God for what you want. Come on. Faith is faithfulness. Mm. It is continuance. That's Thank what you, the Lord. biblical word faith means. That's why we get the word faithful. What is somebody, who's somebody that's faithful? Somebody you can rely on. Why? Because they're constant and continuous and consistent. Yes, sir. So when it says that I can have joy because when I face circumstances that require me to subject myself in a way that I have to submit my will, I can be happy about it because I can have the knowledge, the certainty that what is really happening here is Faith is being tested. My ability to be consistent, to be faithful, to continue. Remember Jesus said this. Remember Jesus said that he that puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not worthy of the kingdom. Come on. It's testing my ability to keep my hands on the plow. There's been too many people that you and I know that said they believed, and as soon as pressure came, they broke camp. Come on. Brother, sister, where you been? Oh, man, I've been going through it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Talk about it. Too many times we've broke camp. Come on. Because of pressures. And what we have to remind ourselves is, this, this, these trials, these circumstances that are requiring me to subject myself so that I have to submit my will, they're intended to test, test. my faithfulness to God. Yes, sir. My consistency with God. My continuance with God. 
Come on. And that word test is the same word that's used to when a blacksmith sticks iron in fire, right? And mm -hmm. then he pounds it to make it stronger. And he keeps sticking it in fire. Then he sticks it in the water and he pounds it more. That's what makes it stronger. That's the picture that's giving here. That trials, circumstances that require me to exercise hupomone is going to make my faith stronger. Because it's going to give me more ability to endure. So the more I face trials and the more I respond to those trials Come on. in a biblical way, I don't run from God. I run to God. I lean in. I press in. I endure. And we're going to talk about the functional parts of this on Wednesday. The more it produces in me Come on. ability to stand. <laughs> My endurance gets stronger. So that's why he says, so let endurance have its perfect work. Yeah. God is allowing circumstances to come into you. It ain't your boss. It ain't, it ain't your spouse. It, 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 it ain't that family member you can't stand. It, 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 no, it's not the circumstance. God has allowed those circumstances because without trials, our faith can't grow. Come on. You don't hear this talk, Pastor D. Without trials, your faith, my faith can't grow. Come on. Stop. See, a lot of times, man, we, we, we are confessing and decreeing away the very thing God sent to produce growth. Come on. So you got to take out a lot of this modern confessing, decree, you got to take out a whole bunch of Bible for that stuff to be true. Come on. Watch what it says. But let endurance. Yes. But let endurance. God is sending stuff your way. You can be happy when stuff comes, when you encounter trials, because, man, God's trying to grow me. Come on. Trying to hook me up. Yes, sir. God's trying to sharpen me. God's trying to strengthen me. Come on. And why is it that I need to be strengthened? What is it that God is trying to do? Why is God trying to do it? Make me perfect and complete. Yeah. Come on. Charity. But let endurance have its perfect work. Watch this. Let the subjecting of yourself to something which demands the submission of your will to something against which you would naturally rebel. Mm. Let the character quality that does not surrender to circumstances or succumb under trial, the thing that is the opposite of despondency, let that thing have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. That word perfect and complete, it isn't talking about moral perfection, sinlessness. It's talking about being mature. Amen. Right? And when we look at our lives, guys, if the assessment of your life is, I'm not as mature as I need to be. You know what the answer is? Here's what the answer is. Start handling stress differently. Stop handling, start handling trials differently. Come on. Because God says, if we respond the right way, He'll make a diamond out of our lump of coal. That's what God says. 
I don't care what some TV preacher says. I don't care what, I don't care how many books they wrote. I don't care how big their church is. I don't care how many people listen to them. I'm telling you what God said. So here's how all this works. Here's how all this works. Patient endurance. Pressure. Go ahead. I'm looking at my I'm looking at my failures and even even my disobedience. I'm looking at all my past as a trial now. It's different. I'm not so saddened by everything and I'm starting to look at it in a different way. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please teach me. No. Um, but I now as a, a it's a trial and I'm trying to endure and and I'm not so horrified by it and which is good because I was really beating myself up there for a minute. I don't know. Is that okay? Is is that is that cool? I don't get it quite. Am I on the wrong path or am I on the right path? No, you're on the right path. Right what? path, absolutely. Look look at Romans 5 3 4. Look at Romans 5 3 4. Mm -hmm. It says that not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing mm -hmm. that tribulation produces perseverance, hupomone. Mm -hmm. And perseverance, hupomone, the ability, the willingness, the desire to subject myself to circumstances and situations that require the submitting of my will to things that I would naturally rebel against. Produces character and character hope. That's wonderfully heavy. That's good. <laughs> And in both these cases, in both these cases, look at James, James 1, 3. Look at the, look at the opino word. Look at the catalytic word, knowing. I love that. Knowing. Come on. Understanding. Look, look, look at Romans 5, 3, 4. Look at the catalytic word, knowing. Come on. Talk about it. See, if I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to do when the trials come. I'm being cursed. I'm up there rebuking the devil. I'm doing all these other things. And I don't have the knowledge to understand that there's a blessing in the middle of this chaos. That what others and even the devil meant for evil, God wants to turn to good. Come on now. It's the very vehicle of transformation. Glory. Ooh. Thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow, looking at it that way, it's like that's a real kick in the pants for the devil if you go worshiping God and thanking him for the trials. <laughs> the I, devil's going, oh, wait a minute, I didn't mean for her to do that. <laughs> it's the same perspective David's disciples have. Paul, yep. they were, man, they were like, man, let's go. The more they were persecuted and beat on, the more, the more they rejoiced. So listen. Remember this, because we got to mm -hmm. remember, good. you and I have a choice in every circumstance to respond or to react, to fight or to flight. Mm. We have that choice. We have that choice. The Holy Spirit wants to empower you to fight any change, any loss. In life, any pressure does not make us victims. People and circumstances can shake you. They can surprise you. They can disappoint you. But what they cannot do is to prevent you from acting with the right attitude. Because you know. And too often, we blamed our response on the circumstances. And now we know. Now we know that pressures and circumstances is the key to developing patience. And patience is the key to maturity. Now we know. 
you and I have the ability from the Holy Spirit because patience is a fruit of the Spirit to stay our course, to follow our course, to run our race, no matter what, no matter who. We have the ability to decide. Who am I going to submit my mind, my will, and my emotions to? The prompting of the Holy Spirit to fight or the prompting of the flesh, which is to run? Nobody else owns that choice but you. You can't blame other folks for your decision. I leave you with this. Wonderful example of of what Hoopamone is. This is Fanny Crosby. Anybody ever hear of Fanny Crosby? Oh. Oh, no, no, I never. No one's heard of Fanny Crosby. I haven't. No. Nobody else. Here, here. Has anybody ever heard of this? Anybody ever heard this? Jesus, keep me near the cross. Be my glory ever. Till my rapture soul shall find rest beyond the river. Anybody ever hear that? Yes, sir. Yes. Any, anybody ever hear of blessed assurance? Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. You ever hear that? Mm -hmm. That one I know. Oh, yes. Yep. How about this one? Pass me not. O oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass be by, I'm calling Savior. Savior, why don't you? I was about to bring the Baptist out. Ba a moment the there. Baptist, I'm about to say, boy, you back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> How about this one? How about this one? This is my story. Yep. Mm -hmm. My song, praising my Savior all the day long. Mm -hmm. This is my story. This is my song. You heard that? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. All of these songs were written by Fanny Crosby. Hmm. And Fanny Crosby was blind. Ah. Since birth. No, wow. she was like six years old. I mean, six months old. She was blind. Notice what she said. Look at this quote from her. Oh, what a happy soul I am. Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world contended I shall be. Hmm. So many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot, and I won't. Fanny Crosby dealt with the difficult trial and circumstance of blindness. And she subjected herself. She was subjected to something that she had to submit her will to. And in the submitting of her will, she found joy in the. No phone connected. Say it again, Marisol. Nope, my fault. Sorry. Nope, nope. She found joy in the midst of being blind. And she wrote over 9,000 hymns, many of which are the staples and foundations of the church today. Mm -hmm. 
Fanny Crosby, in the midst of circumstances and trials, exercised Hooper Mona. She mm. counted it all joy. She didn't quit. She didn't give up. She didn't shrink back. And because of her perseverance, we have the blessings of those hymns today. Amen. Wow. i leave you with this. What are the benefits of biblical patience? It supports our self-control. It helps us to focus under pressure. It sustains us during our temptation because we won't quit. It prevents us from surrendering spiritually. It enables us or empowers us to mature spirituality. And it prevents us from complaining. Self-control and patience go hand in hand. Self-control is for the pleasures of life. That's something that we exercise daily to control ourselves within. Patience is for the pressures of life externally. Patience develops out of self-control. Self-control is daily. Patience is what we implement day after day after day after day. Weiss, if you, if, you, if you want a great translation of the Bible, the Weiss Bible is a great translation. It says, it is remaining under the trials and testings in a way that honors God. In a way that honors God. These are our elements of patience. And I leave you with this quote here. I'm, I, it's past 12, I apologize. Here, here, here's a quote I leave you with. I, I'm, a, I'm a big student of history. And Winston Churchill. Anybody know who Winston Churchill is? Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. So Winston Churchill was prime minister of England. He was probably um, the most influential individual during World War II. Um, he was a bedrock uh, for England when they were under assault. Uh, they, were, they, they were nearly invaded by the Germans. They were under the great you know, the air battle over Britain. And later on in his life, um, he was invited back to his alma mater to address the students um, and to share out of his experiences in life and his public service. And here's what he said. And, and Winston Churchill was short like me. History shows that all the great men were short. <laughs> Winston Churchill was five foot five. <laughs> Right, all the disciples. Don't laugh, Marvin. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> right. So here's Winston Churchill, this great man. He steps up to the podium at his alma mater. This great world figure. Have you ever heard of the phrase "Iron Curtain"? He invented and coined that phrase in the fifties. Here's this great international statesman, Winston Churchill, who's going to give a speech to 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 the young men at his college, and this is what Winston Churchill said. This is the entirety of his speech. Young gentlemen, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never, never, never. That, my friends, is biblical patience. To never give up. To never give up. Never, never, never. To never give in to the promptings of my flesh to flee the pressures, the trials that God wants to use to make me mature. And here's God's promise to all of us. And we, we close here. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. There's a, there's a crown. There's a reward. Is perseverance hard? Absolutely. Yeah. Biblical patience? Absolutely. Is there help from God? Absolutely. Is it necessary for your spiritual growth? Absolutely. 
Is there an eternal reward and benefit for it? Absolutely. Can you become a fully effective Christian for God, fulfilling your purpose and journey in life without perseverance? No way, Jose. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control patience. Amen. Father, we thank you for...